G'day Ziggy D here. Now as some of you guys might have noticed from my various Facebook postings and tweetings, uh, I've been testing out the Final Fantasy XIV Realm Reborn beta over the weekend, and that's also the reason why I haven't put too many videos out over the weekend as well. So sorry about that, but it's all been for a good cause. I've been trying to learn as much as I can about the game uh, so that I could potentially cover it in a lot of depth in the future, in a similar fashion to what I've done with Path of Exile, where I'll bring out beginner's guides and things like that. Now, I've been having a lot of fun with it over the course of the weekend. I leveled up a... Uh, a level, I got to level 15 with a Lancer and leveled up to level 10 with an Archer and also played around with the crafting system. But I just also spent a lot of time exploring the world and the different systems and seeing how everything works and pretty interesting stuff so far. Now the game is currently under a soft NDA so that means I can't give you guys any video footage or audio uh, recordings from the game itself. However, I can take screenshots and share them, and I can talk about what I've experienced. So it's kind of weird like that. I've never really seen an NDA done for a game like this, but it means I can make this first impressions video for you and show you guys some fun screenshots from my weekend, and uh, hopefully you guys will get a good impression about what I'm talking about. Now, I've also obviously taken some notes during my weekend, which I can talk a bit about, and I'm going to kind of break down this first impressions uh, into four basic parts. Well, firstly, I'm going to talk about... Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, and what it is for those of you guys who haven't been following. And I'm going to break it down into the first part, I'll talk about the audio. Second part, I'll talk about the visuals. Third part, I'll talk about the armor design mechanics. And the fifth, uh, fourth part, no, I can't count, apparently. Uh, I'll talk about classes and combat. Now, the reason I wanted to break it down into these four parts is just because these are the four things that really, really jumped out at me in the game. And I think that's what a First Impressions is about. It should uh, talk about what's really jumps out about the game, what seems to set it apart from other games so that you guys can uh, you know, know whether you can be excited about it for things like that. Uh, okay, so Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. Now, some of you guys may remember a few years ago, Final Fantasy XIV is already a game that's come out, right? Well... Put simply, Final Fantasy XIV, when it was initially released, was a massive flop. Now, it, the devs even knew in the beta at the time that the game was not doing very well. Uh, there was heap, tons and tons of feedback from the community about just how the game just didn't seem to do anything right. And I actually have a quote here from uh, Naoki Yoshida, uh, who was one of the, I believe, one of the developers or one of the primary people behind the game at the time, and said... Uh, that with Final Fantasy XIV, they tried to make something different from Final Fantasy XI, and that was what they only really tried to do. And they ended up with not much of anything. So basically, with Final Fantasy XI, what they did, which was a pretty, been a pretty successful MMO and is still played by many people to this day, they, uh, they thought about, okay, what would happen if we took the Final Fantasy series and combined it with EverQuest, which was the major popular MMO at the time. Now that did very well and it still continues to do very well this game. It's quite a hardcore sort of MMO, like it's got the th sort of thing where uh, you die and you get de-leveled, <laughs> that sort of thing, so uh, it's not a, not a very, not hugely popular with a lot of people now, but still, there's still a good uh, player base on Final Fantasy XI now. But with Final Fantasy XIV, they didn't have that same sort of design goal. Now, in hindsight, what Naoki said was, uh, that they should have done something like what they did then, where they thought, well, okay, now what would happen if we tried to clash Final Fantasy the Final Fantasy series with a game like World of Warcraft, the major popular successful game at the time now. So they didn't do that, and the game flopped, and it had a lot wrong with it, and it just didn't seem to do anything right. So they did something that I'm very interested and impressed about, because it's something I've never ever seen done, is they completely scrapped the game and decided to redo it. So they actually, I believe, took the servers offline. I can't remember how long ago it was, but I remember there was a... Uh, an official closing down of the servers so that they could uh, focus instead on A Realm Reborn. So people, some people did play it for a while, and some people, you know, now, today, have these level 50 characters that they're actually going to be able to bring into these legacy servers in A Realm Reborn. But basically, with A Realm Reborn, they took the game completely off, they completely redid it, uh, kept some of, you know, some of the things that they designed that they thought worked well, and instead re redesigned the game from the ground up. And this has resulted in a game that, although being a few years late, is actually seems to have a ton, a ton of polish. And this is something I can definitely uh, confirm from my playing. And it also seems to be doing a lot right now. And you're probably noticing this from the fact that there's a lot of people talking about it now. There's actually quite a fair bit of buzz about Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. And that's because it seems like they've actually done a really, really good job of redesigning from the ground up. 
So uh, yeah, in, in a general sense, it's going to be a subscription-based game, uh, like your traditional MMOs. Uh, and if you're looking, if you're kind of sick of the free-to-play experience where you're getting these unfinished games, you're playing in kind of like this endless beta, like, you know, a recent example that comes to mind for me recently was trying out Neverwinter, a game that had a lot of potential, but just so unfinished and uh, so half-hearted in a bunch of different areas and a free-to-play game and you can you, know, you can kind of excuse it for that reason but I think if people are interested in finally you know getting out of that for a while and playing a super super polished game that feels like a you know triple a plus title game uh, and are willing to pay that subscription for it, I think this might be a game you should be seriously looking at so now let's jump into my first impressions because that's that's the overall sense of what a realm reborn is essentially it's a complete overhaul and remake of Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV is dead. A Realm Reborn is the new game that's coming out very soon, currently in closed beta, open beta, probably within about a month, we'll see. So, first impressions. First thing was, now audio was the first thing I wanted to mention because this is the first thing that really hits you. As soon as you get into that initial menu, and hopefully I'll throw up some screenshots for you guys as I go. Uh, as soon as you get into that initial menu, it hits you like this massive nostalgic heartstring plucking uh, audio, you know, signature track. They've got Nobuo Umatsu, uh, the composer from previous Final Fantasy games, from most of the previous Final Fantasy games, and instantly um, they it's almost like they've used, uh, you know, they've remade tracks from the old games and put them into Final Fantasy XIV. So I think what they're doing here is really clever. They're really trying to get that nostalgia factor for a lot of Final Fantasy for uh, Final Fantasy players and uh, being a pretty big Final Fantasy player myself you know from Final Fantasy I think I played 7 through 10 pretty religiously uh, it was it was pretty pretty special experience to jump in and feel that uh, and this isn't it's not just relegated to the, like the actual audio tracks like the music either so a lot of the music is there from previous games a, a lot of it seems to come from Final Fantasy 6 uh, and seven, I'm sort of feeling that one there. Uh, I think like, but also, not only is it the music tracks, like the musical scores, but you're also getting things like the menu sounds. When you press a button on a menu, sounds like a Final Fantasy game. And when you level up, you get the victory fanfare music that seems sounds like it's directly from like Final Fantasy six VI and seven, those sorts of ones. Uh, that plays when you level up. Oh man, that feels so good. And uh, just everything sounds perfect. Sounds perfectly like a Final Fantasy game. I was super, super impressed with the audio. And uh, it kind of goes well into a, a bit of an idea, I think, that they're going for with this whole thing. They're really trying to combine this idea now of uh, what, are, what are all the things that people have really loved in the past about MMOs, uh, and then what are pe things that people have really loved in the past about Final Fantasy games and trying to combine those two things together. And the music really, you know, the music and the sound effects really show that in terms of, you know, what have people really loved about previous Final Fantasy games. And music has been a huge part of the Final Fantasy series for sure. So that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, and in an overall uh, design sense about how effective that is, my overall opinions are that I think they're doing a pretty good job with that. Now, Final Fantasy XIV, it certainly isn't uh, pushing anything really. Um, it's not trying to create a new MMO experience, uh, you know, far away from like what what other games are trying to do, where they're trying to introduce all of these new features. Instead, they're looking at what it's, what's been really successful and what people have loved a lot in the past. And uh, yeah, but that's kind of getting away from the audio thing. I think that was mostly what I wanted to cover the audio. Oh no, there was one more thing. So there's no, there's very few voiceovers in the actual game. Now I'll throw up some screenshots, but most of the storytelling is done through text. Uh, bubbles very much like you know the older Final Fantasy games and I have to admit this was a bit jarring to come into it first but then uh, it, it sort of suited with that thing like I, I felt like I was being transported back into the older Final Fantasy games now yeah I'm kind of used to just skipping through text and storyline stuff uh, in MMOs especially so I kind of had to train myself to not do that and to actually take the time to read, which once I did, I actually started to notice that this game is actually very, very story driven as well. So despite having no audio voiceovers, it's, it's, if you're a guy who enjoys, you know, if you're someone who really enjoys uh, reading that and getting that, uh, having that really story driven gameplay and actually having the conversations between characters be fairly interesting despite not being voiced over, then that's, uh, that's pretty cool. But again, getting a little bit off topic there, I can't help it. <laughs> Hopefully you guys would enjoy it anyway. So the next thing was visuals. Now the visuals in Final Fantasy XIV, I would say uh, pretty much what you'd expect from a current gen Final Fantasy game if you toned back your expectations because it's an MMO. Now obviously with an MMO you've got so much going on that uh, they're usually graphically inferior to 
you know, single player experiences or even like smaller, more concentrated multiplayer experiences. And that's something you come to expect. So if you turn back your experience, your expectations for that, but then say, okay, this is still a Final Fantasy game, then that's what you're getting. Basically, it looks super clean. Uh, character models look fantastic. The environments are rich and detailed as, you know, as far as MMOs go. Uh, the shadows, I think, were the only things that didn't quite work for me, but maybe playing around with the settings a bit more and they'd be a bit more spectacular. But one thing that really, really jumped out to me was the monster design especially. Monster design is fantastic. And uh, two of my favorite screenshots that I actually took from the entire weekend were actually of monsters. So the first one, I believe, was a... A uh, picture of a frenzied oak, which I'll throw up on screen for you guys to enjoy. That's a sick screenshot. How good does that guy look? That's awesome. And then the next one was a picture of uh, Bahamut, I believe, that I fought a little bit later on. And that is also a pretty rad screenshot. So monster design's really good. Environmental design's pretty richly detailed. Interesting, especially. A lot of the towns and stuff look very interesting. Uh, and character models, very smooth, anime-styled. Uh, very much what you'd expect from a Final Fantasy game. It seems like, you know... Uh, I guess if you're toning back your expectations for being an MO, be like Final Fantasy game that was released a couple years ago. Now that said, it looks a lot better than the original Final Fantasy XIV did, and uh, there are a bunch of comparison screenshots out online, so search for that if you're interested. But basically, they, in addition to redesigning all the mechanics and everything like that, they're not releasing the gra the same game graphically that they released a few years ago. They re this is a, a graphically new game, and it looks pretty spectacular. I think. It's, you know, it's not quite on the level of Guild Wars 2, I would say, but a uh, very, very enjoyable game to look at and hear. And that's uh, often a lot of things, one of the first things a lot of people will mention. That's why I wanted to cover the audio and visuals first up. So uh, I think, oh, just one more thing I just wanted to mention was, because uh, people will probably ask about this. In terms of visuals, the staples of all the Final Fantasy games are there. Yes, including Moogles, which I'll throw up a screenshot of. And you, of course, get to ride Chocobos. And, uh... The Chocobo music from, oh man, I swear it's the Chocobo music from Final Fantasy VII, plays when you ride it too. And it was, man, that was, <laughs> that was so good. It was so good. So I love that. I love that. All right. So now part three, my the third most thing that jumped out for me was armor design and mechanics. Now this is kind of a weird one to pull out randomly because it seems like it's a fairly minor part of the game, but it's just something I've thought about a lot and I really took notice of when I was playing. So firstly, I'll just talk about the mechanics. I'm really impressed by the depth displayed in armor choices, especially in only the first like 10 to 15 levels of gameplay. Uh, now, the depth of stats available on them weren't, wasn't super deep. I imagine that's something that's going to flesh out further along in the gameplay. Uh, but from what I experienced, just the actual sheer amount of choices you have is really exciting. So for example, you've got specific class armors, like things that can only really be worn by uh, one or a few classes. So like the gladiator and the marauder can wear these, but you know, the archer can't, for example. Next you have like ones that are good for generally for fighters, so all of the different fighter classes can wear this. And then there's ones that all the different mage or caster classes can wear. And then you've even got uh, armors that are specifically for trades. So for example, if you're being like a carpenter, you, you can have ones that really give you carpenter benefit stuff. So you have an outfit for when you're doing your carpentry, which is pretty interesting. I've never really seen that. Uh, and then there's the good for everyone sort of armors, or I guess okay for everyone. So there's ones that aren't really suited towards any sort of class, like they're just a generally okay piece of armor, but you can wear them, which if you like switching between a lot of different classes, I guess, then uh, that that is uh, an interesting one. And then uh, in addition to that, there's just also a ton of different slots. Like for example, I'll read out the ones I've here, and there's actually two more that I didn't get the names of, but you've got your hat, you've got your chest, you've got gloves, you've got belts, you've got pants, you've got boots, you've got necklaces, earrings, rings, bracelets, and then there's two more which I didn't get the names of that are like, uh, I think, later game sort of items that you can equip. There's just tons of different slots. Now, this can be a dual-edged sort of sword because uh, usually in games like this, when you have more slots, it means each slot has to be comparatively weaker and less interesting. So it would be interesting to see how they deal with that in end game. I, I can't really tell from the early game. But uh, so far, it just means in terms of like making a character look the way you want them to look, there's the potential there that you can make them look pretty interesting. And that kind of brings on to my, my second point, which is <laughs> the main reason why I was thinking about armors in the first place. Early level, progress early level progression armor is hilarious. It is the funniest thing I've ever experienced in an MMO, was trying to gear my character up while leveling. And I'm sure if any of you guys have been playing the beta, you know immediately what I'm talking about. But um, I'll tell you I'll tell you a little story, and then I'll cut to the first screenshot. The story will be 
How, the point at which I first knew that Final Fantasy XIV's armor system was hilarious. So basically, I was wearing a cowl, uh, like it's like a cloak with a cowl attached to it. Now this fills up both your chest and your helmet slot. And I didn't know that at the time. So I had this equipped, had really good stats, and I was wondering why. And I equipped a helmet, and then what it did was it took my cowl off, my cowl cloak off, and this is what I looked like. I'll throw that screenshot up there. Fabulous. <laughs> As you can see, I've got that beautiful necklace on, the, my little my little skull cap and my purple gloves. Man, it looked so good. This was the point I knew that Final Fantasy's armor system was going to look hilarious. And now I'm going to cue a bit of a montage as I talk about the rest of this, of the different outfits that I had while leveling. And uh, yeah, pretty hilarious. So uh, I kind of had to let go of the notion that I would ever be looking cool until later in the game. I guess once you get towards end level, or if you're willing to sacrifice some stats, then maybe you can look cool. And I kind of, I eventually actually had to do that. I had to go shopping for some gear that was a little bit statistically inferior, but man, I, ju I just couldn't handle some of the gear I was wearing. It's terrible. And you even, when you when you uh, do quests, you get a choice of different types of gear you can select. And when they when you select one of those, it'll have like a random die on it as well, which uh, I, for, for ages I couldn't figure out where the die thing was, and I only figured out when it was too late for me to actually go do anything about it. But, <laughs> but uh, like, I, for example, I, I got tons of yellow tops and green gloves and purple stuff, and yeah, I feel like the devs are just trolling us with those initial die selections. But uh, pretty funny stuff. And I, I think the the very the epitome of my gearing experience for Final Fantasy XIV was uh, when my chainmail undies and leather strapped shirt had better stats than all of the current gear I had access to, resulting in me looking like this. Hopefully I can throw the screenshot up. So I had to run around like that for about an hour or two. That was that was pretty entertaining. That was pretty, pretty fabulous. I, I must admit, very, very handsome looking. <laughs> so I hope that gets the point across. The uh, armor progression Final Fantasy XIV is hilarious. Now I get the feeling like Maybe a female character would probably look better in a lot of these different types of armor or could get away with them a bit better. But uh, yeah, trying to play my just my male human style character that I tried to make look my, like myself a little bit. Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> not quite the vicarious experience I wanted to, ha wanted to have in terms of gearing. So then the final thing I wanted to cover was um, classes and combat. Now the class system in Final Fantasy XIV is that you only really, you never really need to roll an alt. Basically, uh, the the basic subscription that you buy for Final Fantasy XIV each month gives you one character slot per uh, realm, I guess. And uh, that's all you really need because you you uh, can essentially, once you level to level 10 with a certain class, uh, then you can, you're free to essentially go to any of the other class guilds and take up those classes at level 1. Now what this means is you level from 0 to 10 with this class, you do your storyline quests and you do the class quests to level up. Then when you get to your next class, so for example I played as a Lancer until level 10, uh, then I went and got the Archer class. Now I started back at level 1. Now what this means though is that you don't have access to the story quests that you've already done. The game doesn't reset, you're still in your same character. So what this means to level then, you need to either find separate sort of side quests or you need to do like these, these hunting missions called guild levies or you need to uh, do your actual class quests which can sort of take you most of the way. So I think when you're going to be leveling your third and fourth classes and so on, that you're going to be grinding mobs quite a bit to try and level. But for the first few level throughs you can do a lot of that with questing. So that's pretty interesting. Also. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of dual-edged because I really like rolling alts, but this means that I can also just focus on one character really, like, quite a lot and level up the different characters. And then the the additional system that I think makes this really, really cool, actually, is that I'll just wait for that truck to go past, is that uh, once you level a class and then switch to another class, you actually have a couple slots for... Uh, skills that you can take from those other classes you level. Now, for example, when I was I played a Lancer to level 10, played an Archer to level 10, went back to my Lancer until level 15, and when I was playing as my Lancer, I was able to take one of my Archer abilities, which gave me increased damage, it was kind of a buff, and I was able to take that back. This also means you can do things like level a uh, Spellcaster with the Protect spell, and uh, you know, then once you get that Protect spell, you can switch out to another class and use Protect on your characters, which is really pretty cool, I think. It, it means there's a lot more flexibility and a lot of cross-class leveling you can do. And you know, someone who's got a ton of time to invest can level up every single class and have access to, you know, a couple of extra skills. And uh, people that really want to just focus on one or two can do so and try and f find the two that really synergize well with each other. 
And switching class itself is actually really easy. Uh, you essentially do it once you've unlocked the class by just switching to a weapon from that class. So it's based on this kind of armory system of weapons. So when I was playing as my Lancer, if I wanted to switch to my Archer, I just chuck a bow in my main hand and I switch to an Archer. Uh, now you can also change all of the armor alongside that with this, you can predefine gear sets that basically you switch between. So I can switch to my Archer gear set because the, the type of gear you might want to wear for each different class might be different. So that makes it a lot easier. Pretty cool system overall. Uh, in terms of combat overall, um, it was a bit of an adjustment coming back from action uh, RPG style, uh, sorry, action combat style MMOs like Guild Wars 2 and Neverwinter to a tab targeting game. Though that said, even th at these early levels, pretty much once I got to around the level 10 mark, I started to notice that there's a lot of interesting combos between the different uh, skills that you use. So. For example, I can uh, with with the lancer, I can choose to use you know a few different skills in a certain order to try and maximize my damage, or I can then go for back attacks with that, or you can combine these in different different ways depending on the situations, and that's something that should flesh out quite a bit in the future. So, although you're not going for those skill shots like you're going with an action combat sort of game, uh, you're still although you know there kind of is a little bit with the uh, trying to line up for back attacks with the lancer, but that's kind of a separate topic. But uh, in general, you're tab targeted, you're locked on, you're just focusing instead on using your skills, timing when you use your skills, and deciding what combos will best suit you and when to use your skills for the best effect and your buffs and things like that. So it's got its own strategic depth, uh, which even at these low levels still s felt pretty solid, and uh, hopefully will continue to get more and more interesting. Bit of an adjustment for me, not having played too many tab targeting MMOs in the past. I've mostly just played action MMOs, so that's a bit of an adjustment, but uh, I think if you're, if you're a tag targeting MMO veteran, then there's probably quite a lot to get out of the combat in this. And even for uh, act more action uh, combat oriented MMO players, there's probably still a fair bit to enjoy here in terms of combat. With it. There's a nice amount of depth and it, it is much more mobile than a lot of other tab targeting ones I have tried. For example, you are dodging out of the uh, attacks of enemies occasionally. Like there's this one slug that if you attack and you're standing close to, they'll... Uh, call up this big AOE effect that can pretty much almost one-shot you in certain cases. So you really have to get out of, you know, disengage and move away from them to be able to avoid that. And you can dodge other attacks and things like that. So kind of a nice little combined system. Not great for me personally. I, the tab targeting MMO combat thing uh, isn't as exciting for me to play, but uh, I still am compelled by the strategic depth that it offers. So anyway, hopefully this piques your interest about Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I've really enjoyed playing it so far, and I'm looking forward to upcoming beta weekends and to eventually, uh, when the NDA is lifted, bringing you guys some beginner's guides on it so that maybe you can uh, grab the game as well and play along. And hopefully also, uh, if you've been following my other news, maybe I'll also be able to start streaming when that happens. So you guys will be able to come hang out on my stream and things like that. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.